Yeah, you. <laughs> hey, you. Do you have a Jeep Wrangler? Does your Jeep Wrangler have the AX-15 transmission? Is it busted? Huh? Well, if your transmission, your AX-15 is all busted up on the inside, and you have looked everywhere for that elusive transmission that is so hard to find in the junkyards, you find one out of a Jeep Cherokee. All is not lost. You can use that Cherokee transmission. Follow along as we show you your options. Yeah. Alright, here we're picking up the next part. So what you're looking at now is the uh, Cherokee transmission. Come out of 1993 Cherokee XJ. The difference I was explaining in the first part of the video is that the clocking of the transfer case. Look at your hole positions here. In relation to your center shaft, see the position of these holes. That clocks your transfer case down low. Now here's the Wrangler transfer, uh, Wrangler output shaft housing. Notice the positioning of the holes. And you see how this one right here, it's on the it's on the bottom side. That down there is on the top side of that little lug. So you got basically two choices. I have the luckily I have both transmissions here. So what I'm gonna do is you see I've already got the housing off the Wrangler tail end of the transmission. This being the Cherokee. You got two options. I'm going to swap the housings out, that way I don't have to drill. But your other option is, if you was to be, if you was to get a, uh, building a Wrangler, got one with no uh, engine, no transmission, and you the only thing you can find was a Cherokee, I'll still make show you how to make that template that will drill these hose. I won't necessarily have to drill them, but I'll just show you how to make it, and we'll do that here just a little bit. The first thing we're going to do first is we're getting this tail shaft off the Cherokee tranny. So first thing you got to do, this is all up in the way because you have two bolts way up inside here. You got four bolts on the bottom here. Take them off. Four bolts hold the shifter. So I'll get them snatched out first and I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, got the shifter off. And why we need the shifter off is because we got to get to that bolt right there. And these are you got to come out too. These are spring loaded little uh, uh, bolts or whatever the heck you want to call them. What they do is whenever you take your shifter and your shifter moves from side to side like this, this is what, whenever you go from first, second, and you notice if you take your shifter and push it upward and not moving and just push it, it automatically centers itself before it goes into third. These springs is what causes that to happen. So whenever, these center your shifter as it comes in through the rails right there. So okay, got that off. We've got to take this out next and take these out. You can see under here that plate Laying right there where the transmission mount and everything is came from here. You got to get a little bit because you got two bolts right here. Those will have to come off to take the whole housing off. So that's the reason that we need to pull that. So next in line, pulling this assembly right here, here, and that bolt down the side there. Now when you go to take these right here off, uh, you may have to put your wrench on there, take a hammer, and tap the back side of it. They tend to be in there pretty tight. At least the uh, Wrangler was in there pretty tight. I'd take the hammer and kind of smack a little bit to break them loose. By the way, that bolt down there is a number 12. So, nah, I can't hold the hammer and do this in the camera at the same time. So, I'm fixing to take a hammer, pop this right here back to break them loose. All right, next thing you need to do, this right here, be, be sure you do pull it. And be careful when you do pull it. Because what you got beside this right here is a spring and a little ball bearing. Let me get this right here real quick. This is the one that come out of the Wrangler transmission. If you're not careful, if you don't take that out, there's a spring in behind this. If you pull this off, it's going to shoot this little ball bearing somewhere and you know, good luck finding it. Huh? Remember it. That ball bearing fixing not Right. There's a, there's a rod. You'll see when I pull this uh, tail shaft housing off, there's a rod that runs up and down through here that little ball bearing fits notches that goes up inside that rod so you'll see that when I pull it off but I just want to point this out look at the positioning hole here for your uh, where the transfer case bolts onto it you come back here so this is where your uh, reverse switch hooks in it's right underneath that it is a T40 I think Torx we look at the Torx real quick yeah 
Now yeah, you can't see that, but it's a T40. So anyway, got to pull that out next. And before I pull the thing completely out, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right, now to pull that little plug out right there, there's a spring up inside that. Catch that little spring, plug, spring up inside here too. If you're taking, hang, you might as well get lucky enough to hang your finger and it'll pull it out. And there is the ball. So whenever you pull it, you know, if that little ball bearing don't come out like it should, if you're hanging down like this right here, it should fall right out. If not, just get you one of those little magnet contraptions. Like, well, let me set this down real quick. Make sure it don't roll off nowhere. Like the little magnets right there on the stick. Stick up inside there, pop that ball bearing right out of there. See? Bing. There it is. So, we got that off. Your reverse switch is, you know, you got to take this right here out. And take out your reverse switch here. Then we got to pull this plug. This plug right here is, well, on that Ranger transmission was kind of a beast to come out. So what I ended up having to do, I put the uh, Allen head wrench in here and put a cheater bar on the end of it. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to pull this right here out next. Alright, you see what I got rigged up here? I got me a cheater bar on the end of my ratchet. That is a 10 millimeter Allen head going up inside there. So you basically just put the booty to it and break it loose. And here's the little plug you get once you get it out. You got the hole up inside there. And what you got to do at this point, that rod that you're shifting here, rod zone, that rod's got to come out. Let's see if we get lucky enough to use a magnet and pull it out. See, look at that. Just tug it a little bit and out it comes. But don't always expect it to be. Yeah, exactly. Don't always expect it to be that easy. Then pay attention to this right here. Oh, a little uh, word of advice that I just learned from Mexico. Whenever you pull these transmissions out, before you pull that rod out, or even before you pull the shifter off, put your transmission in neutral. I'm about to show you why. I didn't figure this out until I tore the Wrangler apart. I was like, oh crap. This arm right here, once you get that rod out, you got to pull this right here out. You see, there you go. This right here, rides inside of a set of notches up inside the transmission. Now I don't know if the camera, nah, I'll tell you what, I'll show you when I get the tail, house, tail shaft housing off. There's a series of shifting arms up inside here that this all rides on. This little tip right here. If it's in neutral and when you go put your transmission back together it's gonna make life a lot easier on you. I didn't figure that out until I tore the Wrangler one apart. So yeah it's gonna be interesting to get that one back together. But now we got that off what we got left, these right here, 5 8 socket, pulls all these right here out, go all the way around the hotel shaft. Got, yeah, you got a bunch of them. Pull them off. Uh, people I brain party, I told you this was a 5 8 a moment ago, it's actually a 9 16 9 16 socket, pull all the bolts out. Nods are, it's not the tail shaft here. The whole housing is not just going to fall off. But just to save yourself a little bit of grief, your top bolt right here, leave it in. You can loosen it, but just leave it in until you pop your, separate your housing. Therefore, just in case it just happens to jump off and you don't catch it, and if you got concrete driveway or something, it hits and cracks it, you know, that's a bad thing. So leave your top bolt in here just in case. Okay, after you've done went all the way around it, pulled all your bolts. See, there's all my bolts laying there. Leave this one right here in just so it doesn't drop on you. See these little ears? On the Wrangler transmission, these proved to be pretty helpful right here because what you're going to do is, I got me a piece of flat stock stuck in behind it to create a wedge, like a lever effect. And what you're going to do, you're going to pull back on it. And sometimes you take a hammer and pop them loose, but they're stuck really good. you got to wedge them. Okay, I'm going to need both hands on this, and so I'll be back in a minute. You see what I'm doing, though. See? Be right back. All right, where well, I wedged inside there, I took around, took that little dead blow hammer right there, went around and smacked it a few times, and wedged it between right there and popped it loose. And give you guys one more tip. See the mess I made? Drain your transmission before you do this. I thought most of the fluid was out of it, but I was wrong. So there we go. I made my mess for the day. So now we're going to pull this housing off. I'm 
Okay, be right back with you. Well, point out to you guys from Mexico. When I remember when I pulled the shifter arm out here, I told you there's a series of notches that lines up into. What happens? Turn this around right like this. Here's how it sets. It drops in from the top of the shifter hole in like this, but it falls in here. And see how all three of them's lined up? With the transmission in neutral, all three of your shift forks are in line like this. So do yourself a favor before you pull this tail shaft off. The housing, excuse me, before you pull the housing off, put your transmission in neutral. It makes it a lot easier when it comes time to drop this right here back in when you put it back together. So I just figured that this is actually the first time I've had one of these transmissions apart. So I'm kind of learning this process as I go. But when I pull the Wrangler apart, being it's the broken transmission, <laughs> no damage done if I screw something on, up on it. So what I learned was throw it in neutral first. This will fall right back in when it comes time to put it back together. And remember the ball bearing that we took out the spring? Now look right here. This is where those little ball bearings, as you go through your shifting back and forth through your different gears, you feel the notchiness. Right here is what's locking it in. It's a little ball bearing that spring falls up inside these notches. Yep, that's where all the click, click, click comes from when you're shifting gears. So be careful when you take that bearing out, you see how easy it was to come out. So lay a rag over top of it or something to catch it when it comes out so you don't lose it. Because if you lose it, you've got a problem. Alright, basically at this point what we got to do is clean up all of our gasket services. Uh, I'm going to run up to the auto parts store and get another seal that goes right here on the output shaft. And got to make a gasket for the transfer case side. And you know, clean this up, get some more uh, gasket sealer, go around that. And put the Wrangler tail housing back on. It'll be ready to start, ready to prep it up for dropping, drop it into the Jeep. So I'll see you guys at the next step. Alright, it's time to put her back together. All your gasket surfaces, good and clean. Clean out the inside of it real well. Went to the auto parts store to get another seal right there. They didn't have it in stock, so it should be in the morning. Not a big deal. It's not going to stop me from setting the motor in, just now putting the transfer case on at this point. I can change it out with the transfer case. It's still out. i got plenty to do, so not a big deal. Uh, like I said, remember that you had neutral right here, so when we drop that arm back in, it lines up that. So I'm not going to go through a whole lot of detail with the reassembly. The only thing I'm going to catch it on is whenever I put the detent ball back in, show you how to you know, clean it, put it up inside there, make sure you get it in correctly. Uh, when we drop the shifter arm back inside there, I'll show you that. But really, there's no major point going into detail for our reassembly because disassembly, it, reassembly is uh, reverse of uh, disassembly. So I'll catch you with the details in a moment. I'm just run you a bead of silicone around. I use this right here, Permatex, the red RTV gasket maker. It's always done a good job for me under high heat applications like this from the transmission. Not that the transmission really generates a lot of heat. It just, I'm, when using mating surfaces like this on other past projects, it's always worked really well for me. Okay, so use the RTV red around the training and fix the slide the housing back on. Now, before I slide the housing back on, look at this old. I heck people, I don't know what it's for. You guys leave comments below in my video if you can tell me what this right here is for, because I really have no idea. I'm just making sure that it goes back in where it belongs. If you look at the positioning, this is where your output shaft is. Right down inside the crevice here, it snaps down inside that. And it goes up inside this, up at the end of the, the shaft here. So if you guys want to tell me what that's all about, go for it. Leave some comments below. But just be sure you put that back in. And I'm sliding the housing on now. Okay, let's put the detent ball back in. What Basically what you're going to have to do is put the ball on the end of the spring like that and just feed it up inside there. Then put the plug in. I'm right handed people and I'm using my left hand. I am totally uncoordinated. There we go. Then you just snug that up. So all you got to do is snug it. You ain't got to get crazy tight. Okay, we got all these bolts right here tight. And uh, as for, I'll look at the torque specs and put them in the details below. I don't know what they are right off. But uh, just by feel, I guess I got to sum in the ballpark around 45 pounds or so. So anyway, tighten up the detent. Then we're going to drop the shifter, shifter arm in. 
Okay, obviously the camera's not going to pick it up very well because, well, it's way down inside of there. But you remember those uh, slides I showed you for alignment? This is where that slides inside there. And again, that's where I suggested putting the transmission in neutral before you start disassembly. Because now at this point, when you drop this in, it goes down through that. And I mean, I can visually see it, but the camera's not picking it up. But you get inside, it sets right down inside those slots like that. Very easy to do when you got it in neutral. I mean, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, pretty doggone easy. So at this point, now that we've got this in there, that rod that I have lost, oh, here we go. this rod right here goes in next. Now if you look, this is where that bolt we took out, where it was. This hole right here, the shaft goes in to the left. See, right there's the hole that was in through here. That was went through this plug right here. Of course, we got to pull that plug back out. I just stuck it in there so I wouldn't lose it. But this goes in, this hole going back, this hole right here goes to the left, which uh, you're threaded to both top and bottom, so I don't know if it really means a hill of beans to anything, but that's the way it came out, so I'm putting it back in. So I'm going to pull that plug back out, this slides in. Okay, I wiped it off. You can see right there's that hole, I've seen right there's this hole in the back. It slides through so far. Then what you got to do is, your shifter arm here, you pick it up so that rod goes through it. And once you get kind of lined up, there you go. See how it slides through? Okay, that's going to go all the way through. And once it happens, that bolt you took out here, you line that bolt hole up with that and tighten it up. Then you can put your plug in the back side. Okay, you notice where the shifter arm, where your shifter drops in here, that bolt hole lines up right there. So then you're going to drop this bolt here down inside that and tighten it up. But the shaft is kind of dependent on which way it goes in. And like I pointed out a moment ago, you see up inside here now, see that hole at the end of the shaft? That hole goes to the back side. That way you know you guarantee that one end is longer than the other. So that hole in the back side right there guarantees that you've got it going in the right way. And your bolt hole, even though it's the right other way through, if you remember that hole that was to the left of that shaft, that way you know a guarantee it goes in the correct way. So I'm going to line those holes right there back up and that bolt goes in tighten it up. Okay, after you got that bolt tight, run that in, snug it up good. Then we put these in. Alright, now we got to put this right here is what centers your shifter every time you go from, like, from second to third. This right here is what centers your shifter and they go in right here. So I've seen this pull it out a moment ago. But just to be sure, before you stick them in, take and squeeze that top down right there. It compresses this set spring collapse. You want to make sure it's you know, nice and smooth. It's not sticking anywhere, which both of these are in great shape. If they're sticking, I probably suggest soaking them in something and see if they unstick. If not, you get new ones, I don't know, I guess. So anyway, these are good, so I'm not going to worry about it. They go in there and just tighten them up good. Now, at one point, I don't really know that it makes a hill of beans with a difference, but see this right here? This one's kind of copper colored. It came out from the driver's side. This one's kind of dark colored. It came out of the pasture side. I don't really know that it makes a difference, but I'm at least going to put them back like they came out. So if yours happens to be the same color, when you pull them out, mark them left or right, or drivers or left, or drivers or pasture side or whatever. Take them each side to come out. So, let's put them in. Okay, everybody. If you've got your Wrangler and your Cherokee transmission, that is how you should change out the tail shafts, the housings. So you'll do it that way if you've got it. Next part, we will make the paper template in case you don't have the Wrangler. See you next.